Have you ever taken a practice MCAT test, whether that's made by the double AMC or a third party company and wondered, hey, how do I convert this into the real score? Or how do my score correlate with the real deal? Well, if you've ever thought something along those lines, you're definitely not alone. I know I was thinking about that when I was studying for my MCAT and dozens of people online and across the world have been thinking about that as well. Luckily for us, there's a person named Joel Harris who went out of his way to make a Reddit user submitted data from the double AMC real test versus some of their practice test scores. And so today I'll be looking over and talking about some of that data he collected. Hopefully you guys will find this data helpful in correlating some of your own third party practice test scores to real scores and stay tuned towards the end where I talk about some of the conclusions and some of the pros and cons that we can derive from this data and some important key ideas to keep in mind while you're still studying for the MCAT. First off, I would like to talk a little bit about where this data is coming from. And so, like I said earlier, this is from Reddit user submitted data, actually from January to September 2017. And this spans across three different test companies that were compared or looked at versus the real AAMC practice test. First one is Kaplan, then Next Step or Blueprint now, and Princeton Review. And on the screen, you can see some of the different sample sizes. However, even though these sample sizes are somewhat large, they're ranging from, let's say, two to 300 people, it is important to keep in mind that these scores are from over six years ago, or this compiled data is from six years ago. And there's a lot of self-reporting bias that goes into a lot of these Reddit created surveys. If we're to look at the first data set, it's gonna be from Kaplan. And we can see that the sample size was a total of 309 survey responders. And what you'll see from the data is Kaplan is heavily deflated. A crude conversion to go from your Kaplan score all the way to your real test score is that you can add 10 points to your Kaplan practice score to get a relative estimate as to how your real score would be. Of course, this isn't fully accurate and it won't apply to everybody. However, this is just the summarized data from 309 people. Next up, we have Blueprint and for their sample size or responders, there were a total of 354 responders for the Blueprint survey and their scores were a little bit less deflated than Kaplan. However, they still are deflated relative to your real MCAT score. And so a crude conversion is you can take seven added onto your blueprint practice score average, and that can be a relative estimate to see how you would do for the real deal. This estimate and conversion seems to be less accurate as you go from higher and lower bounds. And that kind of applies for Kaplan, Princeton Review, and UWorld as well. Next up is Princeton Review. Here, there were only 190 responders. And what you notice here is that the scores are the most deflated out of any third party company producing practice tests. For example, it was found from this data set that on average, the person who scored a 503 on a practice Princeton review would score 518. So a 15 point jump from practice to the real deal. The crude conversion can be really hard to see because there is such a big score jump between practice and real deal. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about my own experience with my practice score correlating with my real score. So here on this chart, you can see some of my practice blueprint full lengths and my average blueprint score. And then on the real deal, I scored a 517. So a little bit earlier, we talked about that crude conversion of adding seven to your blueprint score ended up being exactly about right for me. However, this isn't always the case, right? And it's just because you do somewhat well on blueprint or practice doesn't always correlate. The real deal. For example, somebody that I know scored around 510 as well on their practice and then ended up scoring around the 510s during their practice double AMC uh, practice test and the 510 for the real deal as well. And so there's a lot of variables at play and it's not just, oh, okay, I'm just going to add seven onto my blueprint average and that's what I'm going to get. After talking about some of this data a little bit, I want to remind you all to keep in mind some of these key points. There is heavy response bias, and you guys probably learned about that in PsychSoc, but people who score higher on the MCAT and on practice exams are likely higher to respond to the survey, and so you don't have as much data from the lower bounds or from people who aren't actually filling in the survey due to being embarrassed or, let's say, not being interested in the survey or looking elsewhere or not even being on Reddit in the first place. Secondly, companies can change their grading algorithms at any time. For example, let's say I got a 510 in my blueprint exam this year 
and three years down the line they change how they grade let's say a certain section or they make one section harder and that could actually deflate or inflate your score based on how they change that algorithm and so we as test takers don't really have any control over how they control this algorithm over time. So just keep in mind that this data is from six years ago. Thirdly, companies are incentivized to deflate your scores. This is likely due to the fact that they want to encourage you all to continue using their products. For example, let's say you get a 503 on a Princeton exam. That makes you really freak out and feel like you need to buy, let's say, a course or books through them. And so I bet that drives some of their revenue from people who are seeing that they're performing poor on their company's exams and then that will give them the incentive or bump to purchase more of their product so that's also something to keep in mind lastly just because you receive high practice mcas scores from a third-party company or on double amc practice material that does not directly correlate to a high mcat real deal score there are a lot of factors at play on the real day for example you can feel really hungry feel tired I know for my MCAT, I didn't get enough sleep. You can feel kind of grouchy. You can feel a lot more nervous. Uh, you're taking the exam in a completely different environment. So there's just a lot of different factors to keep in mind. So just because you do well in one does not directly correlate to the next. In conclusion, there's clearly a lot of score deflation that occurs between third party companies and the real double AMC material and your real exam. There are so many factors and variables that go into every exam that you take. So it's really important to take every score with a grain of salt. Use scores that you receive from third-party companies as a framework to guide further studying and to identify certain subject slash content gaps or areas of weakness. However, don't take the scores too much to heart. I know when I was practicing, I would freak out because I got a low score here and there. I promise at the end of the day, AMC material is really the ones that matter. And so continue utilizing third-party testing material as a form of practicing your timing and practicing getting used to reading hard passages. However, past that, you're better off using double AMC material to prepare for your real MCAT. And now I believe that there's five double AMC full lengths out. So that should provide you with enough practice for let's say the final two months before your exam. If you found this video to be helpful or interesting, please leave a like comment down below and subscribe to my channel. I'll be making more videos related to the MCAT, studying and just general college productivity down the line. So I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one.